Just because you've got a working prototype doesn't mean your design is ready for production yet. I saw this firsthand when I was a chip designer at TI when a new engineer was bragging to me that his latest design worked perfectly after looking at just a few units. But testing more units revealed a fatal flaw and he ended up having to scrap the design entirely and start over. He incorrectly assumed what works on a prototype means it will also work in production. And that same assumption shows up all the time in PCB design. So let's go through six common PCB design mistakes that can completely destroy production. Mistake number one is no test points for key signals. This is probably the most common mistake that I see, even from otherwise solid designers. If you don't include test points, your manufacturer has no easy way to verify that the board works before they ship it out. That means there's no way to measure power rails, check communication lines, or confirm that the firmware software was loaded correctly. Sure, major problems are likely to be caught in your functional testing, but the earlier you catch defects, the better. Some issues might not show up as immediate functional problems also. So what happens next? Either the manufacturer ships you untested boards and leave testing up to you, which is a nightmare when you're ordering in high volume quantities, or they charge extra to create a custom test fixture that works around your design. Also, when placing test points, if you put them on both sides of the board, the factory now needs a double-sided bed of nails fixture to be able to reach these test points. That kind of fixture is much more complex and expensive to build. You should include test points for every important signal. That means power, ground, reset, communication buses, and any critical GPIOs. But don't add test pads to RF or any high frequency signals because the parasitic capacitance of the test point itself can cause issues in those cases. Put all of the test points on one side of the board. The bottom side is usually best for test points or the side that opposite from the components and that's the standard for fixture based testing. Keep all of the test points grouped together if possible and clearly labeled. Add a nearby ground pad or two to make probing and measurements easier. Check the description below to grab your design mistakes checklist bundle. You'll get the same checklist that I've got right here, including this one here, which covers all the mistakes discussed in this video for manufacturability. This checklist here, which includes all the common PCB design mistakes that fail certifications. Plus you'll get all these other design review checklists for your schematic PCB layout and enclosure. Links in the description below, or you can just scan this QR code right here. Here. Mistake number two, missing part number and revision on the PCB. This one gets overlooked all the time and it might seem minor, but it can cause a lot of confusion during production. Let's say you send a board to your factory, then two months later you make a small change. Maybe you update the microcontroller footprint or tweak a capacitor value, and then you send a new file set. But the silk screen on the PCB doesn't include a clear part number or a revision label. So now your factory has no idea which version they're building. Maybe they build the wrong version by mistake. Maybe you lose track of which version they built. And good luck debugging problems if you're not even sure which board revision you're looking at. If you've made major design changes, you might be able to spot them visually, but a lot of times that's not possible. Either way, you need to include revision numbers so you and your factory don't get things mixed up. Always include a part number or project name in the revision of on the PCB silkscreen. Something like part number 1203 revision B or predictable designs pet tracker revision B are great examples. Just keep it small and out of the way, but still visible and make sure it matches what's in your manufacturing files. That includes your BOM, your Gerber files, and your pick and place files. Everything should line up to avoid confusion. Mistake number three, no fiducials for pick and place alignment. This is another issue that can quietly ruin manufacturability, especially with more complex boards. So fiducials are tiny circular copper pads with no mask or silk screen, and they're used by the pick and place machine to align the board correctly before placing the components. Without them, your assembly house has to either manually align the board, which is slow and error prone, or they modify your files to add fiducials. When you're prototyping just a few boards or using very simple 
chips with low pin counts, you can often get by without them. But for anything going into volume production or more complex boards, you definitely want to include fiducials. At least add two global fiducials to your board, ideally on opposite corners. That gives more reliable alignment. And if you're using high density packages like QFNs, BGAs, or fine pitch connectors, consider adding local fiducials near those parts too, just to increase the placement accuracy. Just make sure there's at least one millimeter of clearance from other copper or silk screen and don't cover the fiducials with solder mask. Mistake number four, no panelization or depaneling strategy. If you're only making a couple boards, this might not matter, but once you start producing at scale, especially if you're using smaller boards, your manufacturer is going to want to panelize the design. That means putting multiple copies on a larger panel so they can be assembled together, then broken apart later. If you don't think about this ahead of time, your contract manufacturer might make their own panel, which could mess with your layout or they'll send the files back asking for changes, which just slows everything down. Even worse, poor design of the depaneling can cause cracked boards, broken connectors, or fractured solder joints when they're separated. If your board is, a, let's say, 100 by 100 millimeters, plan for panelization from the beginning. Add mouse bite tabs or V-score areas and make sure to keep important components away from the edges. Talk to your manufacturer about their preferences. Ask about tooling holes, panel sizes, and spacing. Most are happy to send you a panel template if you ask. Mistake number five, using hard to source or obsolete parts. This one might sound obvious, but it's a big issue, especially with how unpredictable supply chains can be. You might find a part that looks perfect on paper, but if it's only available from one distributor or already marked as not recommended for new designs, that's a big red flag. Factories don't want to pause your build while they wait three weeks for one missing capacitor. And some might even substitute a part without telling you which puts your product at risk. Before you lock down your BOM, check availability using sites like Octopart or Fine Chips. Make sure each part is available from multiple suppliers and isn't nearing end of life. Choosing parts that are easy to find and well supported will make your build go a lot smoother. Don't forget to grab your free design mistakes checklist bundle. Whether you're designing the product yourself or outsourcing the design, these checklists will help you prevent mistakes and costly redesigns. The link is in the description below or you can scan this QR code right here. Mistake number six, tight component spacing and no room for rework. When you're working on an early prototype, it's tempting to cram components together to save space. That's especially true if you're trying to get a really small board. But the tight spacing can create a lot of problems during production. So don't pack things super tight unless you absolutely have to. If a part fails or is placed incorrectly, your manufacturer might need to fix it. They could need to probe nearby traces, rework a solder joint, or even replace a component. If there's no room, they'll either spend a lot more time doing that work or they can't do it at all. So be sure you give extra room around connectors, tall components, and anything that you think might need debugging or rework. Also avoid putting tall and short components too close together. That can cast shadows during inspection and even affect solder reflow. And don't assume everything will go smoothly during production. It won't. So make space for human hands, tweezers, and soldering irons because someone is going to need to fix something eventually. If you found this video helpful, then you're going to want to watch this video next where I review common PCB mistakes that will cause your product to fail certifications.